Despite the fact that everyone is criticizing game developers for poor optimization, the graphics have actually been getting better. Look at what we played 15 years ago. Mafia 2, Dead Space, the first Assassin game and Far Cry 2. And now compare it to the photorealism and Plague Tale Requiem and Cyberpunk with path tracing. But how far can 3D graphics go? What unusual graphics technologies will become the norm in the future? How will AI influence the video game industry? This is MK, today we're talking about the future of the virtual worlds. Let's go! Many people think that 3D games appeared in the early 90s, recalling Wolfenstein 3D or the first Doom game, but in fact, the most important breakthroughs in 3D had been made much earlier. Take for example the Z-Buffer. In fact, it is a part of memory that stores information about the depth of objects in the scene, which allows you to determine whether the surface in question is hidden behind another, which simplifies rendering of shadows. The concept of this technology was described back in 1974 by Wolfgang Strasser, but the Z-Buffer reached ordinary users only 20 years later, in the mid-90s, with the advent of the Nintendo 64 with its breakthrough GPU called Reality Coprocessor. On top of that, RTX was not invented by NVIDIA. Back in the 16th century, Albrecht Dürer described several methods for projecting three-dimensional scenes onto the image plane, including mathematically calculating how the geometry of the scene is perceived along a ray. This is how ray tracing works. And even if we take the computer implementation of it, the first RTX on was obtained in 1963 by scientists from the University of Maryland, who obtained an image using ray tracing on an oscilloscope screen. And this applies to literally all three-dimensional image processing techniques and technologies that are currently used in games. Back in the 1970s, various methods of shading, texturing and bump mapping, which is a method of creating a relief surface, were described. It took literally decades before major market players such as Microsoft, Sony, Sega or Nintendo began gradually using these technologies in their consoles and APIs. The reasons for this delay are obvious. New functions required new performance levels from computers and were implemented only when the CPUs or GPUs of newer generations were powerful enough. The boom in the growth of computing performance occurred just in the 90s and the beginning of the 2000s and it is quite easy to assess the progress of the graphics of those years by 3D Mark, which has been released since the last century. The advanced graphics of 1999 now looks primitive, even for smartphones, but just go five years ahead and the picture is completely transformed. Detailed shadows, improved lighting and high quality textures have appeared. The graphics level of 3D Mark 2006 is something that not every modern model game can boast of. But what exactly made games so realistic back then? Having answered this question, we will easily understand what kind of graphics are waiting for us ahead. And the superficial answer is simple. More digits. The original Lara Croft from the Tomb Raider in the mid-90s could boast of large triangles. Only 250 polygons for the entire model. For comparison, the latest Lara Croft already has up to 200,000 polygons. Obviously, the smaller the size of the primitive triangles that make up the model, the more realistic it looks. We all remember the square wheels from the games of the 2000s. Therefore, the first obvious progress that we can expect with the increase in GPU performance is the continued increase in the number of polygons. An interesting solution in this field is offered by Epic Games in their Unreal Engine 5. The Nanite technology in it allows you to render an image using so-called micropolygons. The idea is that now the PC draws a 3D model not according to a clearly defined number of triangles, but adjusts their number to the number of pixels. That is, the higher the monitor resolution, the more polygons will be processed and the higher the overall quality of the model will be. As a result, in the case of Unreal Engine 5, a typical polygonal grid of a single 3D object can contain more than a million triangles, requiring a couple of dozen megabytes of memory and several milliseconds for rendering. How much is that? In the most beautiful for its time crisis game, entire scenes containing hundreds of objects could use a couple of million polygons in total. But increasing the poly count is only one side of the coin which is responsible for the geometry of objects. We also need to apply textures onto our 3D models, 
and here the role of the more the better applies as well. Many games of the 2000s look kinda blurry today for a reason. Nowadays, some HD texture packs can occupy several tens of gigabytes, which is comparable to an entire game 10 years ago. High resolutions are actively developing, 1440p and 2K no longer surprise anyone. Therefore, now that individual frames can already consist of several million pixels, developers are forced to improve the quality of textures so that they don't look blurry in large resolutions. The current consoles have been able to output games in 4K for a couple of years now, and this resolution is becoming more and more popular among PC gamers. If we extrapolate this to the 8K future, which Nvidia began talking about a couple of years ago with the release of the RTX 3090, it becomes obvious that the overall quality, as well as texture size, will continue to grow, and the 8GB RTX 4060 will inevitably turn into a potato. But we have already talked about this in one of our previous videos. For those who are interested, the problem of the video card market. But quantitative changes are useless without qualitative ones. Even with very high resolution textures and millions of polygons, without good lighting the picture will look flat and unnatural. Adding depth to the picture was done back in the mid-2000s when the GPU performance increased enough to handle it. Then the first technologies of shading and reflections based on rasterization began to appear. But now we're interested not in the past but in the future. And it is in ray tracing, which at once solved all the difficulties with building the right lighting for one simple reason. This technology is based on physically correct modeling of the behavior of light as it passes through a virtual scene. Now developers no longer need to use various techniques for shading or reflections, it's enough to just attribute the necessary physical properties to all objects in the scene, RTX on will handle everything else. But of course everything has its price. In this case, it is the performance, and although it is possible to calculate the behavior of millions of rays on any graphics card, this process is very slow on solutions without specialized units. And in games with ray tracing, even the quite fast by modern standards GTX 1080 Ti turns out to be much slower than the simplest RTX 2060, which has RT cores. Of course, in the future, when video cards and consoles become even faster, ray tracing will become even more accessible, and then it will become the norm for game development. For a couple of years now, there has been an improved version of Metro Exodus, which simply will not run on cards without the RTX. But generally speaking, ray tracing in its current form is not the limit of lighting possibilities. In Portal and then Cyberpunk, path tracing was introduced not so long ago. In fact, this is an even more advanced version of ray tracing, which is even closer to reality and even more physically correct in calculating the intersection of rays with surfaces. Of course, with a sad result for performance. Even the RTX 4090 can hardly handle path tracing without DLSS. And yes, as you might guess, even path tracing is not the end. There exists the so-called rendering equation, which determines the amount of light radiation in a certain direction as the sum of its own and reflected radiation. And it can be solved with any desired accuracy. So ray tracing is like polygons or texture quality. There is no limit to perfection. You can use billions of rays if you so wish. But still, any user of a more or less powerful PC can touch the practical maximum existing today with the help of a free piece of software called Blender. There are enough demo scenes for it on the internet and one of the simplest is called Classroom. Yes, it looks beautiful, but at the same time it is clearly noticeable that it's still CG, albeit at the level of a modern Disney cartoon. And do you know how long it took one RTX 3080 Ti to calculate this scene? 15 seconds. That is, 4 frames per minute. To get at least the appropriate for console gaming 30 FPS with this level of graphics, you need a card 450 times faster than the one stop and RTX 3080 Ti. Okay, of course the rendering engine will use some information from previous frames, but still, in order to calculate such a highly detailed scene with the right lighting in real time, you need a card at least 100 times faster. And here many people may have a question. Why is the calculation of this scene so hard? Because even in the most beautiful demo of the Matrix on Unreal Engine 5, a powerful RTX 3080 Ti in 2K can produce at least 30 to 40 frames per second. 
The fact is that the closer we get to photorealism, the more and more computationally complex models have to be used, and simultaneously improvements in the image quality become less noticeable. That is why path tracing in Cyberpunk 2077 gives so little graphic improvement, but is so demanding on the GPU. But will we ever be able to get the sufficient level of performance to output Disney-level CGI in real time? Yes, graphics cards have been developing very quickly in recent years. For example, now the RTX 1490 outputs under 90 teraflops in 32-bit floating-point calculations. For comparison, the GTX 980 Ti level is only 6 teraflops, or almost 15 times less. But only 7 years have passed between these cards. And we do not take into account the power of the RT and Tensor cores, which the old 980 Ti simply doesn't have. So further growth of graphic performance by several times over several years does not look unreal. But looking at Nvidia's greed, we come to think that technological progress will definitely not come cheap. Okay, since new technologies are very demanding, is there any way to mitigate their impact on performance? Of course there is. Upscaling. You can generate a smaller picture and make it big. We have seen a bunch of these recently. Nvidia's Smart DLSS is the most prominent. It relies on tensor cores, uses motion vectors in previous frames, the magic outside of Hogwarts works well in this case, and the picture sometimes turns out to be even better than the native. AMD and Intel are lagging behind here of course, but still their FSR and XESS make it possible to boost performance by tolerably degrading the image quality. And there is also such a funny thing as shading rate. Why render the blur effect in racing games in full resolution if we don't even look at it when we play? Thus you can get a noticeable performance boost by rendering objects far from the player's field of view in reduced resolution. And such technology is already available in Dirt 5, Far Cry 6 and Borderlands 3. Sony PlayStation 4 Pro, generally speaking, can't handle 4K. But thanks to checkerboard rendering, that is when information is partially taken from previous frames, the console manages to achieve this resolution, and again with a not particularly strong influence on the overall level of graphics. And since future rendering technologies will become even more performance intensive, various cheating, that is upscaling, will inevitably become part of our lives. Nvidia with DLSS 3 already knows how to generate entire frames. AMD is preparing this feature for their cards in FSR 3. Of course now all of this doesn't work perfectly well and often flaws in the artifacts are seen in real gameplay. But if we consider that DLSS is only 5 years old and during this time it has gone from blurred picture to sometimes tripling the FPS with an excellent picture, the future of upscaling technologies is quite rosy. And it is quite possible that in another 5 years we'll forget about native resolutions altogether. They might even be worse than what DLSS 4 will be able to offer. In the end, we will touch upon artificial intelligence. It has already entered our lives and you can even communicate with various smart bots just in a search engine. Of course, AI technologies are already finding their place in games. Nvidia has advanced here more than anybody. Take for example DLSS, which is based on machine learning and training on highly detailed models. Or for example, you can recall NVIDIA Instant Nerf technology, which can create complex objects with realistic fur or clothing based on several photos or textures. NVIDIA and Remedy Entertainment have developed a method using machine learning that can create realistic facial expressions when playing the right words. This will greatly help in animating games and translating them into different languages, for which facial expressions may not coincide with English voice acting. You and your men will do that. You have to go in and out very quick. I want you to get all the ammo and... NVIDIA Neural Texture Compression or NTC can help cards with a small amount of video memory. The fact is that the process of unpacking modern highly detailed textures is quite laborious and NVIDIA suggests transferring it to fast tensor cores. In addition, this will allow you to run textures through a neural network, thereby further increasing their quality. Or vice versa. Initially, use less detailed textures, getting good quality after running them through NTC. This will allow you to unload video memory, which is extremely important for current NVIDIA graphics cards, which have a small video buffer. Of course, AI can be used not only to improve graphics. The capabilities of ChatGPT are quite enough to make speeches of at least minor characters of video games more interesting and diverse, 
as well as add additional reactions to the player's actions and even generated quests. This has already been tested by the Skyrim modding community. And recently, NVIDIA introduced Avatar Cloud Engine for Games, a set of assets for AI which in real time will allow you to create and voice realistic interactive avatars using ready-made language and animation models, which will greatly simplify the work of game developers when programming NPCs. On top of that, this technology allows to recognize the speech of the player, that is, game characters will be able to respond better to users and thereby enhance immersion in the game. Such technology will soon appear in games. One of the first will be Stoka 2 Heart of Chernobyl. You can use advanced AI to create additional difficulties for an advanced gamer. It's hard not to notice that in modern games, NPCs are still quite dumb and sometimes do inadequate things. By training a neural network on the actions of real players, you can make bots much smarter. So much smarter, in fact, that the AI by OpenAI was able to beat the best Dota 2 players back in 2017. And although graphics technology has advanced a lot in recent decades, we haven't reached the limit yet. To get high-quality CGI in real time, we will need cards a couple of orders faster. And if technical progress in the GPU doesn't stop, this level is quite achievable. On top of that, we may not have to wait a couple of decades for this. All thanks to upscaling, which is getting better and faster every year, including because of AI. Although in fact, not everything is so smooth. The closer we get to photorealism, the more difficult it is to notice changes but we have to pay for them with increasingly high demands on the performance of your hardware. Will we ever achieve a balance between realistic beauty and the performance of your PC? Who knows, but there is no theoretical limit here. I hope it was informative and interesting. This was MK, my name is Mikhail Kroshin, I'm waiting for you in the comments. Bye.